welcome back to the Womanomics Podcast. I am your co-host, Pierre Bryant. And I'm your co-host, Corinne Jones. And thank you for joining us. So we have a super, super, super dope special guest, the man himself, the Mr. Diddy of Notary, Tiger freaking Toledo is in the building. Hey. Oh, <laughs> what's up? We yes. are so excited are. to have you. It is such an honor. Um, we just kicked off our podcast. And so for you to be willing to be with us and spend this time and share the space with all of our viewers, we are immensely grateful. So thank uh, you for coming. For my melanated sisters, anything. <laughs> now, I don't know if my uh, video is showing at all when I when I speak. Yep. yep. Oh, cool. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So we are good. Yeah. Everything looks good. So yeah. let, let, so let's chop always, it up, ladies. Let's let's be ourselves. Let's do what it do, baby. <laughs> yeah. So we always like to start off our episodes with one question in particular. And it's when did you know you could be an entrepreneur? Um, okay, so it's not when I knew I knew I had to be one. Uh, because mm-hmm. when I well, I grew up with my brothers, both of my brothers, one actually um died at an early age of AIDS. Uh, But I always grew up seeing my brothers um, have their own business, right? And I didn't know what entrepreneur was, but I knew they didn't want to work for people. I didn't really know why um, and start their own business. But the the prompt was seeing my mother uh, suffer from diabetes and getting fired from a job that she worked for seven years, right? And they didn't give her a a severance pay or anything like that. They just called her into the office. We're sorry we have to let you go because, you know, diabetes started taking a toll on her. She couldn't walk as well and uh, so on and so forth. So I was actually sitting right next to her when she got fired. And my mom is a strong, strong Black woman, right? And um, she's a Taurus, right? So she, I've never seen her cry in front of anybody and that day she cried in front of this complete stranger uh asking this guy you know like i need my job how am i going to take care of my family how am i going to pay rent and it broke me i was about 15 years old um it broke me to the because i didn't have any skills i didn't have any money i didn't i was in high school so from that point i was like whatever is not this I want that. Right. So from that, that very point, I just pursued entrepreneurship, but I I wish I had a Walt Disney story to say, like, I didn't have any jobs. No, I had many jobs, right. (laughs) I had a lot of jobs, but the, the, the goal was always the same was to work for myself. So what was your first job once you made that shift? Chuck E. Cheese, baby. Chuck E. (laughs) Cheese. What up? That's right. I was Chucky. Um, I, I was the cash. You had the hat on? I had everything. I was everything. Wow. wow. And that little kid that stabbed me in the back of the leg with that fork, I'm going to find your little ass. I, I know you grown now, B, but I'm going to find you, man. It was, it was a birthday party. Kids rushed me. They jumped me in Chicago and then somebody stabbed me in the back of the, you know, the leg with a fork, one of them plastic forks. <laughs> so Tiger, so oh my God. you all those, so you, so Chuck E. Cheese was your first job. That wasn't your first self-employed opportunity. No. So when did you make the shift of becoming an entrepreneur or did you do little things on the side? Was you selling socks outside in traffic? Like what did you do? Right. Oh, be- better yet, I was robbing Chuck E. Cheese blind. Oh. it's past seven years so you guys can't uh, arrest me for that shit but i was selling tokens <laughs> i was selling tokens on the side you know what i mean I had- oh, that's that's so- that's that's tokens. yeah baby i had boxes of token and each roll was ten dollars a pop guess who was selling them at retail price but i just had a stash under the register so it looked like i was pulling out the actual token oh so I, I was selling the chuck e cheese plush dolls full price you know sometimes Ooh. the gangsters will come through and be like yo cut me a deal i'll be like all right all right, all right. i'm gonna save you five dollars <laughs> i'll sell the chuck e cheese and pasquale dolls on the side <laughs> <laughs> so that 
that was your first encounter as an entrepreneur. That's a good side hustle. Yeah, that's a good side hustle. Yeah, criminal hustle. But yeah, I was uh yeah, God forgive me. I, I'm a new man now. I'm a new man now. You had to do what you had to do. It was trying times. $150 a day I was grossing. And then when they would give me the Ooh. little Chuck E. Cheese check, I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna go blow this on clothes. That is so funny. that's actually pretty good. So, but you know what? It really does speak to like that business acumen because not only did you have to like figure out what you were going to sell, like you had to actually be able to sell it. Like really like the thing about entrepreneurship that I love, which is the most challenging, the most fearful, but the most rewarding when you do it is being able to make up an idea and create revenue out of nothing, Ooh. like out of nothing. I'm just amazed. That's it, innovation. I mean, that yeah, that right there is, see, that's that's that God-given, everybody has that ability now, right? Mm -hmm. But to take the time to cultivate that, oh my God. And then when you tap into it, like you'll never be broke because you know that you can literally bet your last and then make it back. Somehow, mm -hmm. some way you can make it back. So you're, you're more willing to take more chances um, because you are manifesting a product or service that never existed before. That's why I always say like, there's no such thing as competition because if you, if you created it from the, from your mind, which you're one and only, there's no way that somebody can compete with you. All they wow. can do is try to hijack your shit. That's deep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was good. And, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to ask, like, just because you were speaking about the belief in self and knowing that you can do it, like, what do you think, on a scale of one to 10, how important is belief in self to have a successful business? Forget what industry you in, just in general. And how do you, how do you get up? How do you build up your belief in self? Um, so great question. You guys got some great questions. Um, so I would say... Belief in self and knowledge of self are two things, right? Mm -hmm. Knowledge of self, just, just understanding where you come from. Like, you don't come from slave. We don't come from slavery. We don't like that. Our origin did not start at that, right? And as much as, you know, culture wants us to believe that's where everything started and that's where they start the movie off at, where it's labeled. That's not where we started off at. We started off you know, there were architects that were brought here. There were um, engineers that were brought here, doctors, you know, all of these great professions. There are kings and queens that were brought here, you know, and kidnapped and brought here. So having that knowledge of self and knowing that I don't come from slavery, like that's not my thing. So having knowledge of self is huge. Once you, once you have a good foundation on that, you can start building on oneself, right? So like even with Ancestry.com, going to Ancestry and finding out where your roots come from. Um, like my roots is like Nigeria and Benin Togo. So I'm like, okay, that, or, or in this area, it was a warrior class. All right, well, that, that explains why I go after things the way I do, right? Um, but the confidence in oneself is so, so important because you're gonna reach, you're gonna hit a lot of rejection period. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you're going to be in business, you're going to be hit with a lot of rejection, a lot. So if you do not have the confidence to look yourself in the mirror and pick yourself up when nobody is there to do it for you, your spouse is too busy to even recognize and your kids really don't care what's going on, you have to be able to look yourself in the mirror and be like, look, you got this. You could do this. I don't care if you have to, like for me, I'm a, I'm, I'll am I'm give you my morning routine. When I wake up, first thing I do before I jump in, you know, the shower and everything like that, I put on motivational speech, like from either from Les Brown or, or Anthony Robbins or Jim Rohn or uh, Eric Thomas. I get that word in my mind, like, you could do this. You're a warrior. You're the, uh, you know what I mean? And it gets my mind in a good space. 
because there's a lot of negativity out here. So if I let the news tell me, oh, 12 people got killed over here and there's the new monkey pox coming over, like I could be depressed all day off of that. Right. Yeah. So I have to, I have to be highly selective of the information that goes into my brain because it's going to predict my mood. Same thing with music as well. I won't listen to trap music or hip hop like I used to because it, it invokes a certain type of emotion out of me. Mm -hmm. So I may listen to some classical or I'll listen to some house music where there is no words, right? There's right. no words yeah. telling me like, whoop that trick, whoop that. Like, and then I want, <laughs> I go outside to, to Target and shit and I want to whoop some trick. Like, like where you at trick? <laughs> I want to whip some ass and shit. Y'all know it's true. <laughs> No, it's true. That's true. Yeah, Listen it's true. To the I mean, Gay and all of a sudden you're looking for love. You know what yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, it's the vibration that the music is on and, and, and the conversations that you have and the company that you keep. Everything is vibration. And, and I didn't always know that I have a responsibility to protect my energy. I felt like if I walk mm. into the room in the workplace and my family and the energy is bad, it's just I have to kind of endure it. No, I can set boundaries. I can choose the energy that I want. And I'm also responsible for the energy I bring into spaces because it's energy is mm. everything. So when we're listening to certain music, like there are music I like and I'll hear the lyrics and I'm like, so because I'm consciously aware of the importance of energy, I'm thinking, cut it off, Corinne. You trying, yeah. you got you got places to go, especially today. <laughs> you need to be vibrating high. So I'll change it. So I'm aware of that too. So that's awesome. Yeah, I was I, I did a study. It was um on I think it was Sigmund Freud um that said that like you said, music hits a certain vibration, and in that vibration, the music actually affects your cells in your body, uh. right? And then it was like uh, depending on the type of music that you're listening to, if it affects the smallest molecule of cells in your body, it will transform your thought. It will transcend you into a whole different place. So yeah. I was like, okay, I, I started to be a little way more conscious about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like energy affects like the atoms and cells yes. so it it has the ability to change the world and mm -hmm. so when we really not to get all deep and scientific get deep and scientific baby <laughs> but when we really think about it we hold so much more power than than we give credit to because we're so distracted with all these external stimulus that we don't realize the power that we have so i'm just excited to to share that and to share that with the world because yes. a lot of people we kind of aware but we we don't we make light of the little things that can make a significant difference like you said in your morning how you start your day indeed yeah, so that's awesome i had a question about um you were saying about um belief in self and how um it's important to believe in yourself because there are times when no one else will so mm -hmm. how do you what can you say to experiences where um you're not always winning especially being innovative and creative and doing and offering the world things that hasn't been offered before and you get rejected and kicked mm -hmm. down I, I'm, I'm willing to bet because you're human, it's not always a case where you can just speak life into yourself and get back up. So can you talk about any experiences you've had where you felt defeated and how you overcame it? Every day I get defeated. Every single day I, I, I'm going through some type of defeat, right? Um, you have to put, uh, how can I say, like, it's, it's not, I, I want to say landmines of positivity right like you you walk uh. and then boom you know you get hit with a a dose of positivity or you walk over here and then boom you get hit with uh you know like hey some accomplishments that you have you have done in the past that you can kind of like lean on and rely on one you have to celebrate the smallest wins that you get right i don't care how i don't care if you got three cents you you know somebody deposited three pennies into your account from online and you've never made money online before celebrate that three pennies right so i celebrate every single little win i don't care what's going on two i i stay in gratitude right i'm always thankful like i'm thankful for you you guys being on here and i'm thankful for this show i'm thankful that you guys created this show to reach a whole bunch of other people that may be going through these challenges so gratitude keeps me in a really really good space um <clears throat> 
also, I write down my goals. Um, like I'm on a challenge right now. And it, it, it's funny how difficult it has become for me, right? Because I started it in January. And the challenge was I have to write down 300 of my goals, right? In my journal. Wow. And I'm like up to 172, like since January. And I'm like, why is it so hard for me to get to 300? <laughs> but I can always go back to that journal when I, whenever I'm having one of those slow, dreary days, I'll just go back and read it, right? <clears throat> and be like, okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna accomplish this. Wow, I did accomplish this. Celebrate that win, right? And I just, and I'll try to write more and more mm. until I hit the 300. I probably won't stop at 300. I'll probably keep going uh, past that. But that has helped me out a lot as well. Um, yes. And then, and then of course, the, the motivational stuff that I listen to. Mm. Yeah, I listen to it in the morning. But if I'm having a rough afternoon, I'm going to listen to some more again. And I try to stay busy because an idle mind is a devil's playground, right? Yeah. So I, I, I try to be as consistent, even if I'm doing just a little bit towards my goal, that's more than doing nothing at all. Mm -hmm. I, ho I hope that answered the question. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. So wait, we got to just backtrack a little bit. One, sure. you just gave a whole bunch of gems, a whole bunch of things for people to add to their toolkit, but... I just need you to put a little bit more emphasis on sure. being grounded in gratitude because that is one thing that I speak on. I live on my personal page is guru of gratitude because I think that what people underestimate is just being appreciative, putting out that good energy. You get it 10 times in return, but like expressing gratitude scientifically does something better to your spirit. Yes. to your personality, to your soul. Like it does so much more and it's free. It's something you can give to yourself over and over. It's something that you can literally cover yourself with and, and be in abundance in. And clearly that's my ministry, yes. but I just want you I to love speak, it. speak more on it because that's me right there. I, so truth be told, I didn't start the, the like, I, I always did some type of gratitude exercise, but this year, I like went all in, right? Like all in, I'm like gratitude every day, multiple times a day, like yeah. continuously gratitude. And T, you are not kidding. It changed yeah. my, the way I see the Your world. Whole life. Yep. <laughs> the whole world, yeah. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And <clears throat> I wish I caught on to it earlier in my life, um, but the gratitude really puts you in a place of abundance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. Look, most people look at scarcity. When you look at <clears throat> business, a lot of people look at competition, right? Now, when you look at competition, competition really is a scarcity mindset, meaning I win, you lose. That's it. We can't win together. Otherwise, it's not a competition. Right. But if I see you winning, I'm like, yeah, and I promote you and I'm, I'm making flyers and stuff. And I'm like, man, I'm so grateful that they're coming out with this. I hope they blow up. And I'm, you know, I'm just pouring into like, I know they didn't ask me to make flyers, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Like just <laughs> add, you become, you get to see opportunities where you can help and give and give. And it is true uh, that old Christmas saying is better to give than to receive, because if you're, in a giving position, it, it you have to be in a place of abundance in order to give, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're receiving all the time, that means you are, you're probably in a position of lack, like right. you don't have enough of. But if it's like, I'm gonna give this, I'm gonna give that, I'm gonna give this, and you, and that comes from gratitude. You, you mm -hmm. see the world differently. Opportunities, doors start opening up for you. It, it becomes to the point like right now, because this is, uh, you know, around like mid part of the year, I got more opportunities where I, I, I can't even seize them all. So I said, you know what, let me create, um, let me start a new season of the notary war room to bring more people so they can seize these opportunities because I can't do it all by myself. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, the gratitude, uh, if I don't take anything else, the gratitude, um, living in a life of gratitude, I'm taking that to my grave for sure. And what I found with gratitude is that when you're grateful, you're more present in the moment. You're not worried about what went wrong. You're not worried about what could happen. It it grounds you. And, and then you, you, you operate from a place of abundance because when you're feeling thankful for what you already have, the energy you're giving out is that it's already enough. And so the more things you're grateful for, the more things you start to find through habit through it throughout your day. Like if I pull up at the spot right in front of Target versus all the way in the back, because I just been practicing gratitude and writing in my journal and thanking God for the things that I'm given already. Yes. I just started to I started to notice and pay attention to all the things that continue yeah. to flow. So then when beautiful opportunities present themselves, it's like, come on, this is too good to be true. I'm like, this is the next logical step because I'm in the flow with it. And yes. sometimes, you know, yeah. I revert back and I start getting tense and tight and worrying about money or worrying about other challenges in my life. But I now and I, I've been practicing it consistently. I'm thinking, oh, the solution, like Tierra said, is free. I go right to my journal and I start to list and, and be authentic and full of emotion. And I list the things that I'm thankful for from small to large. And I instantly feel better. Like I don't pop the pill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. medicine for the soul. <laughs> it truly is. And then opportunities present themselves because you're in this position of receiving. Indeed. I, yep. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that was good. I know for me, when I really started to get into my gratitude journey, like it caused me to like slow down. Like I remember I used to be upset when I didn't make the light. And then when I moved in a space of being more grounded in gratitude, I was just like, okay, I didn't make the light, but now I have time to change my music safely. Now I have time to adjust myself in the car and I'll have time to drink water. And now you're just like, wait, hold on. Like it just changes your mindset completely. And you do start being grateful for the smaller things. And another thing Tiger, that you touched on that I just wanted to emphasize was the, the 300 goals. First of all, that's dope. I want to know where that came from, where you get that idea from. And then the philosophy where I wanted to, you know, just run back on that part is because you get to see where you've been. Sometimes we forget our track record and yeah. we get so caught up in like fear or despair or frustration <clears throat> that we forgot where we even came from. We just came from accomplishing a whole bunch of great stuff. We yeah. do for a little, a little speed bump, like, you know what I mean? And you're going to get over it and then you keep going. But sometimes we need those written down like brag sheets almost. So I yes. just want to know, like, kind of, where did you get that like idea from? Steve Harvey. Mm, okay. Steve, Steve Harvey. He was doing a, a speech at a conference and he uh, posed a challenge to everyone in the conference, right? And if you know Steve Harvey's story, he was homeless. He was living out of his car for three years, right? Um, oh, wow. And, you know, went through two divorces and, you know, made millions and then wind up ending up, ending up broke just to make his mm -hmm. money back. And it was like... You know, one of the things that he did, he would, he would say that, hey, I have a vision board even to this day. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he has all of, you know, and he's very accomplished, private jet, Rolls Royces, all kind of stuff, right? The mansions, everything. And he is like, you should see my goals today. So him saying that he's still writing down his goals, whether they got accomplished or not, he just keeps adding to that list and adding to that list. And it gives them more and more to aspire to like i have to walk this path and when i took on that challenge i was like all right there got to be something he's a successful guy let me let me let me try this out what what's the worst that can happen right worst that can happen i keep it to myself nobody ever reads it anyway and you know as i go back to it here and there i i've noticed like wow i did create this I did create this. Wow, I thought I needed permission to do this. I don't need permission I, because I already created it, right? Mm. So it you will steamroll through a lot of your goals. That's what, now I understand why they say you should have big lofty goals because if it's too small, you're steamrolling. You won't even think twice about it. You'd be like, man, I accomplished that like the very next day. 
But if it's huge, if you're saying like, I want to make $100,000 a month manifesting into the universe, right? Uh, Your mind starts to look for opportunities in order for you to manifest that and make that $100,000 a month or $100,000 a day. So that, that's where that comes from. Mm-hmm. Steve Harvey. Yeah. So for the 300 goals, for those who um, have never done that, I haven't. So I'm definitely going to try it. How yeah. do, how do you yeah. recommend you start out? Do you just say, because if you're not careful with so many, I'm thinking already it'll end up being like a to-do list, but to-dos are goals as well. Yeah. So how do you approach writing it down? So, so like you and I, we journal a lot, right? <clears throat> so the first thing you have to do is not think about it. Just flow. Just go. trust me. Your, your goal is 300. You ain't going to make the 300 in the, you know, like a couple of sittings in your first week. You're going to hit a robot and be like, whoa, you got to write that. You might even write your goals more than once. The same thing over and over again. Like now you, you'll like this, uh, Tierra. I put gratitude like a couple of times on there, right? Like, <laughs> live in gratitude, ex- exercise gratitude, be still and, and show gratitude. Like that's on my list because it's a goal, right? Yeah. So it's, you just have to let it flow and it will come to you. And once you hit that roadblock, then you realize that like, okay, why, why did I just stop here? Why can't I think of any more? And then if it, it forces you to like go within and see, like, what do I really, really want? Why do I want all this money, right? Mm. To do what? Mm. Well, I want to spend more time with my kids and be a better father. Or I want to spend more time and take vacations. Like that, then you really start tapping into the nugget of what yep. you really want, right? Yeah. Because the first hundred is going to be surface layer goals. First surface layer gold. I want the Rolls Royce. I want the 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 eight room mansion, and it's all surface layer goals. But why do you want that eight room mansion so you can invite family over so they can be comfortable to be in an environment where they're safe and they can eat and be merry, right? Right. So that's what the three hundred goals have been teaching me is that what what is the core of why I want these goals? Why do I want to be able to emulate and show success? And not in a braggadocious way. If I'm in a Rolls Royce, they're like, okay, if he can achieve it, I can achieve it. That That is the goal. That like Tiger Toledo is like Will Smith would say is an idea. Mm-hmm. Like that's not my real name, but it's like Tiger Toledo is an idea. He came from the belly of the beast, Brooklyn, New York, in 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 the crack cocaine epidemic, people getting shot, stabbed, killed. He made it out of that. It took he he lost his way a couple of times. Like I'm not Mr. Perfect. I lost my way quite a few times, and even to this day, I still lose my way here and there. But I need something to bring me back. So even if even if I had like five shots of tequila and two, two Long Island iced teas, right? Be like, damn, nigga, you out here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll go back to my book and be like, all right, we got to get back on track. <laughs> Shit, nigga. <laughs> you fucked up, nigga. <laughs> you out here in your boxer briefs, nigga, like, chill. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, lunch. That is funny. <laughs> that is so funny no that you know what but it it it's so true and there's just so many ways that you know we need to learn how to show up for ourselves and I feel like we lose that along the way we come in with so much momentum we're going to do this we're going to change this we're going to be this we're going to you know create this type of business and then you start, you know, facing those little bits of rejection and you start facing those moments of uncertainty. And then, you know, you completely crack, you completely crack and then you reclude and now you hide behind shame and now you hide behind guilt and kind of all of these things. So like you were speaking, you, you 
almost like a phoenix. Like you literally came up from someplace that is literally systematically meant for you to break, that has been conditioned and culturally set for you not to survive. And so when you're speaking about uh, kind of going off and, and, you know, bringing your way back, what are some ways that you, you know, bring your way back even before you had some of these sharper tools like journaling and stuff like that? Were you journaling in your 20s? You, I, like, I, because I, I, I was always an artist, so I would always draw and sketch. Okay, okay. So yeah, I was always in a book doing something. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, nice yeah, I, I like I said, I, I lost my way quite a few times. Um, I, 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 my mom passed when I was seventeen, so I always, I always feel her presence near me, right? And I, I, I can always hear her in my ear. It's like you're better than that. You're, you know, and the reason why I live in Chicago now is because when she passed, here's here's the thing: people handle trauma differently, right? And mm -hmm. there are people that are homeless right now because they lost someone in their family that they never recovered from. I almost went that path. Um, and there was a lot of criminal activity going on around me. All I wanted was company. I just wanted my friends around me. I didn't care what they were doing, right? And mm -hmm. it got to the point where my older brother, who at the time was addicted to crack cocaine, he came in the house and he saw that me and my friends were all cutting up crack, putting it in valves and stuff. And he was like, damn, I'm losing my brother, right? And when I saw the look on his face, I was like, okay, I got to get out of here. And that's where I made the move to Chicago. At some point, you have to be self-aware, right? You have to like know to yourself and say to yourself, although there's a lot of peer pressure around me, people are saying, oh, you're going to be a notary. They don't make any money. Or, you know, you can't do this. I mean, like you hear it all, right? Like, no, we're not interested in the product that you're selling or, you know, you have to be able to set these landmines of positivity all around you because there was a guy that that did a video it was so powerful he said we're so quick to put an alarm system on our house to protect our home we're so quick to put an alarm system on our car to protect it from someone stealing it but how come we don't put an alarm system on our mind mm -hmm and protect it from all the other garbage that keeps coming in and tries to throw us off track. So, yeah. you know, you're going to go through the tough times. And if it was easy, like, you know, everybody would do it. Um, is it that the, that's a powerful, powerful question you asked. You have to, you have, I'll say something that great, uh, Dawn Velez said, she said that you have to be have grace with yourself mm -hmm. you have to yeah. give yourself permission to make some mistakes right like don't 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 be so hard on yourself understand it's a journey it's not a destination it's a journey enjoy the journey enjoy you're gonna go through hard times you don't think rich people go through hard times irs right. on their back family members trying to tap into their pockets people trying to scheme break into their account all kind of weird stuff mm -hmm. There, there, on every level, there's going to be some type of trial and tribulation. Enjoy the journey, pick up your flowers, smell it on your way there, right? And enjoy it and don't beat yourself up so bad. It's going to be okay. So I have a follow-up question to that. This is my favorite question mm -hmm. um, as it relates to the journey and having a vision for where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Who did you have to become? in order to reach your next level. And your next level could be success wise or the vision you set for yourself when you were a teenager, when you lost your mom. Um, so who did you have to become? Because some people, I, I'm sure, cause I know I was one of them, you you mimic other people. Oh, I wanna be like her, so I'm gonna do what she does. Yeah. But you don't become that on the inside cause you're not her. So mm -hmm. you just do the thing until you run out of steam or you have some type of trauma response to your own stuff and then you fail. So you think that you just, you can't be successful because you haven't become that first. And I think a lot of people don't um, understand how important it is. They think mm -hmm. the coming is in the destination. Yeah. Um, 
but you have to already be it so that you yes. can move authentically and consistently to get there. So for you, who did you have to become in order to be all that you are today? So two, that's a two-part question. Um, uh, I have a two-part answer. So I'm becoming like, as we speak, as you're watching this right now, right? Like, because I've never been on this show before and I've never had a chance to really talk intimately with you guys before. So I'm literally becoming a new person just off of this. So see me in the next hour and I'm a totally different person because I'm continually developing into a new and better version of myself. Now, as far as um, setting your mind on the person you want to become, you literally have to draw the line and make the decision, right? You say, okay, I don't have the millions in my bank account yet, but I'm a millionaire. I am, I am that. And you ever seen someone walk into to a room and be like, they just, their aura just demanded a, a, a attention is like, who is that guy? Like, he, or who is she? Like, she just, I feel gravitated towards it because that person drew the line somewhere in the sand and said, I am this person. And when whatever room I walk into, you will know I'm that person, whether I say something to you or not. Right. Mm -hmm. So making that that stern decision and saying, I'm going to be successful, period. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to go through trials and tribulations, but I am a success, period. And you start to live like that. If you say I am a great father, you will you have to say, no, I'm not a mediocre father. I'm not a bad father. I am a great father and my kids will know it. Everybody around me will know it. Once you draw that line in the sand, you cross it and you never look back. Never. Mm. Ever. Mm. Because Just my criminal my, my, my criminal activities, if I brung that from New York to Chicago, I wouldn't be here where I am today. I got on that Greyhound bus with a brown suitcase, which I'm looking at it right there, with a brown with a brown suitcase, $150 in my pocket, and a boom box. That's all I had. That's all I had to my name. And thank God my uncle gave me a place to stay, right? But that person that I was in New York, I left that person. I said, I am not that person anymore. I don't care where, what friends will call me and be like, yo, V, you remember what we used to do? Nah, I don't. I'm not that dude no more. Like that dude is dead. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're evolving every single day and the more we realize that bit by bit anything's a cinch right the more we just drinking a bottle of water instead of drinking soda in the morning is helping my health just a small workout maybe five push-ups a day versus no push-ups a day is putting me in better health those little things is helping us evolve so you have to make that decision. I think that's the biggest part. You make the decision right in here and then everything else changes for you. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers wow. the question. Oh yeah. Yeah. I got tingles. Yeah. It's so true. It's just, yeah. So for people, new entrepreneurs that are watching and they hear you say, you have to be all those things and believe that you're a millionaire. Some people will probably say, well, how do you do that if I'm looking around? and I don't have it, or I don't have the opportunities that other people may have had, or you don't understand the disadvantages that I've been set up with, how do I still believe and see that as a possibility? Because some people have not had positive influences. Maybe they're not well-read. They just don't have a lot of exposure, but they do have a dream, and they do have um, some level of creativity, but they just don't know the how. Because I understand, but I can only imagine some people just, they don't, they literally don't know how to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been there too. And by the way, great question. If you guys ain't following this, follow this, share this, all of that. This is one of the best shows I've been on ever, Thank ever. You. <laughs> so, Thank you. So, so follow this show. Holy cow. You guys have like some dope ass questions. Um. <laughs> So 
there was a time where I was just spinning my wheels in the mud. I, I was just like, damn, I'm not getting any traction. It's got job. I'm going from job to job. I can't get anywhere. And um, I got out of my comfort zone and, and uh, went to a conference in Atlanta. And one of them, powerful thing his name was Lamar Tyler he's my, he's still my mentor to this day uh he said to me he's like if you want to know where you're going get around people that already found or already uh, know where they're going or mm -hmm. or you know are already doing what they know yeah so basically he's saying surround yourself around people that are doing exactly what they want to do and you will eventually find out exactly what you want to do. So they weren't doing the notary business like me, but because I was in the environment of people like maybe starting their own hair products or starting their uh, first business for the very first time, uh, they were so clear and so driven that I couldn't help but absorb some of that energy, just the same as music, right? Entering your cells and everything. So it's like, all right, this person know what to do. Like, I'm, I'm gonna eventually figure out what I want to do. And I eventually figured it out. And I start, and then you have to emulate success. Success really leaves clues. So it's like a ship that leaves the harbor. You can see the trail that that ship left for a while. Follow those clues. We live in an age now where you can, you can learn something at an accelerated rate, but you can't be jumping from here to there, to there, to there, to there. You have to make a decision and say, all right, I want to be great in marketing. Write down all the stuff that does, that has to do with marketing, right? And then start picking them off one by one. Just take it, because it, it, it's always an ecosystem of, of things to do. Whether you say, hey, I want to start my own uh, hair products. Well, there's a whole lot. There's a universe on just hair products, but yes. you have to make a list and start checking them off. Check them off. Check them off. Slowly but surely, you'll you'll start to get better and better and better. And today is the day. Like you don't have to go to a a college or a university to learn all of this stuff and get permission and mm -hmm. do all of this stuff. No, you can like start your hair product company today. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go on Canva, create a flyer and be like, I'm a business owner. And then you start doing the work behind that. Yeah. So get around, get around some great people like Corrine and Tierra. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, definitely. I feel like uh, being that this is my, and I always say this because I want people to understand, this is my first year of entrepreneurship. Okay. I'm awesome. Awesome. Six months in. Yes. We still here. We still surviving. But what has helped me, what has um, accelerated my creativity, uh, my belief in self, and just the idea in different ways that I want to pursue this business and this industry is getting in those rooms, getting in those rooms with the right people, getting in those rooms with people who are, like you said, where you want to be, or even if it's not 100%, you want to uh, do your life the same way. It's just like, it expands your thought process. When I started this, I was like, okay, I, I know I want to be a notary. I know I'm not super into loan signings. And then I met, you know, Rafaniel and I started learning about estate planning. I'm like, oh, okay, this is different. And then, you know, then I started coming across you and I started to come across tech and other people that are really just dominating kind of like that legal space, the legal doc space. And not only that, have turned it up a notch in automation, uh, uh, signing service, um, getting like those different businesses, having creative ways to market and just, I just have to say this part. I did my pamphlet. So shout hey. out to Tiger, for, <laughs> shout out to Tiger for, for teaching me, you know, a different way to market my business, which isn't just a Canva flyer or just telling people it's just the innovation. When you get into certain rooms, your level of innovation, it, it increases, it peaks up. And, you know, that's just something, that's just something simple if you're in an entrepreneurial space that you could um, leverage being in these rooms with these people, having these conversations, bringing forth your ideas and stuff like that. So we always like to make this podcast actionable. So yes. we want to ask you, what are some mindset tools 
that you use to fuel your business, to, to show up for your business every single day, to just reframe, you know, some of those distractions and um, rejections that we all face. Ooh, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm a fighter, right? So meaning like, I'm aggressive as shit. So like, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm the type, like, I don't know if it was from my environment in New York or whatever, but like, if we enter a room, right? It's, well, at least for me, at least. And I know I got this from New York. If I enter a room, I'm looking for the biggest nigga in there. And I'm saying, how am I going to fuck him up if she <laughs> kick off? <laughs> right? You're like, he don't look like the dude I could just punch once and knock him out. <laughs> All right, where's the chair? Where's the new <laughs> chair? Like, no, for real. Like, <clears throat> so I'm, my mind goes there, right? And so I'm always like fighting. I'm always in this fighting mode where, uh, I don't like to ask for permission to do things. I'm, I'm, I'm more of the forgiveness. Oh, my bad, my bad. I'll do a my bad in a second. <laughs> but me asking you for permission, nah, that ain't gonna happen. But I'd be like, oh, for real? That's, that's, damn, I didn't even know. Sorry. <laughs> right? <laughs> AKA IRS. And for real? I, I, I couldn't go right now. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't read it. So having a fighting oh spirit, especially being an entrepreneur, is super important. Um, I'm not saying that you should be competitive, but I'm saying that there is there is a good trait in being competitive. But don't don't approach the business as being competitive because it's a scarcity mindset. Competitive meaning I will train to um, endure pain, right? Mm. I will train to endure rejection. I will train to be able to stay up a little bit longer than the next person. It has nothing to do with anybody else. It's all about your endurance, right? Like, so when I'm on a treadmill and I'm one walking or running, I'm looking at my future self saying, well, if you're going to be walking down, you know, uh, Wall Street to ring that bell, to, you know, take a company public, you better be in good shape, nigga. Like, you can't be looking all flabby and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that, that suit better sit, fit you right. And then what if somebody, one of them stockbrokers want to test you, B? What you gonna do? The swing on one of them stockbrokers. You gotta stay ready. I gotta, I gotta stay ready, right? So it's like, you're, you are really competing with yourself. Um, visualizing my my future self helps out a lot my future self um because i because i'm an artist i can draw as well i can draw an entire environment right and i drew out myself um and that nigga is super successful like he and mm. here's the thing like i wrote down i drew it then i wrote down all the attributes of him and it was like, okay, he's loved by his community and his people. Like, that's really, really, really important for me. Like, um, if, if I gain all the riches and my melanated brothers and sisters don't respect me or love me, I'm a failure, period. That, that's just how I feel. That's how I approach it. So... I, I create this environment where I'm, I'm loved by my peoples, right? Um, I'm successful. I'm able to help a lot of people. Uh, family loves me. Kids love me. I'm, you know what I mean? So I, I'm into philanthropy, uh, making donations, building incubators in Africa and Haiti and, and uh, United States. Like all of this, that, that person that I look into the mirror, I don't see myself. I see my future self. And yeah. I have to walk towards him and guess what that my future self in that mirror is inviting he's like come on come on yeah. dude this shit is great yeah. over here and he's calling yeah me. i love that so yeah. now i'm on the treadmill like i'm coming to you man <laughs> i'm gonna hold my spot fam you know what i mean and it's and, and it, it's so it keeps me focused it keeps me so focused to do it because i see my wife smiling and, 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 you know, 
hair done, nails done, everything did, right? <laughs> she, right. She, she, she looking fly and flawless. Kids are at private schools and, you know, they're not one. I'm walking towards that. So be very clear of what you want. Be yeah. super, super clear. Even if no, look, you don't have to tell anybody. You don't have to tell everybody. And plus, the Steve Harvey says it all the time. The worst thing you could do is tell your big dreams to a small-minded person, right? So they're not going to understand your vision because it's your vision. If it was their vision, they would have it. God gave you that vision for you. You're supposed to walk into that divinity. People will look at some of your actions, don't understand why you're doing, why are you doing that? You're not making no money. Don't worry about that. I'm on a mission. I understood the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> I understood the assignment. Let me go handle this. And that's what you do. And just know that there's going to be all kinds of things pushing you on the side, a little car accident over here. Kanye West got signed with the Rockefeller. The very next day, he gets into a car accident. Yep. Fractures, fractures his jaw, right? Like, yep. it's shit that's like crazy. that happens. It mm -hmm. happens. It happens. Just be like, okay, well, inch by inch, anything's a cinch. I'm going to work on my jaw. I'm going to do my, the exercises that they're giving me. I'm going to still spit rhymes. I'm going to still write rhymes. I'm going to still make beats. I can still do all of those things, right? I just can't mm -hmm. speak. And then you're still making some dope-ass beats. So yeah. even if uh, an opportunity doesn't fall in your space right now, see what you could do right now immediately to get to that opportunity. So when that opportunity does come, you're prepared. You're like, I got this and some, let's go. Yeah, that was good. Uh, I was feeling the <laughs> spirit on me that time. Yeah, we was all yeah. in the flow. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> um, No, just cause you know, again, like speaking to that visualization, like speaking to how you see yourself like when you look at yourself in the mirror you you is we're conditioned to pick ourselves apart there's mm -hmm. just so much criticism in the world um there's so much like you said comparison in the world that we have it is it has to be a me versus me it has to be who i am today versus who i want to be tomorrow it has to be recognizing who i want to be tomorrow and taking the steps to show up to be that person tomorrow by what you do today and um, speaking about Kanye, I just feel like that's so crazy. Like that's just really <laughs> how the devil worked. He did all of this work, faced all of this rejection, did all of this triumph yes. to finally get to that space of signing as an artist, not a producer, not in the background. He wanted to be on the forefront, do all of that to get into a car accident the next day and have what he needs to complete that dream, wired shut and can't use it. And to fight back from basically you know, starting over again to that is just crazy, but he yeah. saw himself a certain type of way. People didn't see him the way he saw himself. Indeed. And that vision is different. Yeah. And, and even to this day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and even to this day, he billionaire, right? But yep. just went through a divorce and had, you know, and has kids with this woman. So yep. he still goes through these, these, these bumps and we're always going to go through them. That's just part of life, right? You know, I mean, like, just think about the type of audacity you have to have to be like, I don't want no problems ever in my life. Like, that's, dude, the only way you're going to do that is being six feet under. Like, yeah. forget about it. Like, you're going to you're going to have some problems in this life. So you're even, you know, I, I look at one of my favorite power couple, uh, Jay-Z and, and Beyonce, and they went through marital problems, right? Filthy rich. They got everything they could possibly want, but they were still they still had to go through some type of infidelity or whatever the case was. So every, you're going to go through some challenges in life. That's mainly what it is. It, you're going to go through some challenges. You're going to get tested. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to have strong faith, right? And, and you got to push forward. You got to push forward. Um, yeah. That's yeah. No, that Ooh, was yeah, yeah, I got my mind racing right now. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> no, that was it. Corinne, you got anything? Yeah, I was going to say that transparency moment. Yes. I, 
In my earlier years of life, I didn't think that I had to go through difficult times. I mean, discomforts and stuff like that, but from a success career perspective, I didn't expect any bumps, especially if I have a blueprint laid out. I know what the steps are for success from a corporate environment perspective. Mm. There won't be any challenges. Mm -hmm. And that was the furthest thing from the truth. Just life itself, not even just in the workplace. Life is not um, just a straight shot because it would just, we wouldn't even be grateful for that. You know, challenges is what kind of keeps us humble and keeps us grateful. And so one of my affirmations is I can do hard things. Mm. Because the feeling of the feeling <laughs> of like difficulty, so to me, it makes me feel like, oh, that you know, it's almost like a, I don't know, a trauma response. I, I go back to, oh, I, this this emotion that I'm feeling or this disappointment equals that I can't do a thing. I can't, I just can't do it. It's not for me. And I have to talk myself, you know, I have to talk to my little girl inside of me and say, no, Corinne, you can do all things. Yes. You can do hard things. You can do hard things. Yeah. And so that helps me, you know, push through even something as small as having a really bad cold, but you still have to get up and show up for your kids and be, and be there, be emotionally present and not have, you know, you don't have to, you don't have the luxury of hiding under your covers all day. That's a hard day, but I can do hard mm -hmm. things. And so when I apply that affirmation through my day or through experiences, and sometimes it's not easy. I have to literally go back and say, okay, when was the last hard thing I did? Cause I really yeah. can't do hard and I look at my track record <laughs> yeah yeah my track record is a hundred percent because I'm still here yes so okay I have to remind yeah. myself and it and and, and literally it, it gets easier because you've adapted this mindset habit but for me the emotions doesn't change like hard things like I don't care how many hard things I've experienced today's hard thing is still hard it still hurts yeah. it's still difficult but I have a toolkit and that's what we talk about on this podcast. I have something I can reach to. I have my affirmations. I have to remind myself, Corinne, you got this. You, you've done hard things. You can do hard things and you, you will continue to. And if that doesn't work, I, I write it out. I sometimes write my affirmations out, say yes. them, believe them. You know? And it gets me through that hard thing. And cause I, I had to, I come to that realization because I didn't always, I thought, okay, once I've overcome this hard thing, now here's the glory. Yes. <laughs> and just, until we're dead, <laughs> it's going to always be something that makes us uncomfortable because we're having a human experience. So I just, I so appreciate you sharing that because that goes on in my head. And some days your mind can play tricks on you. The, the emotions or the insecurities can be so overwhelming. You, or it could be the devil. You're telling yourself, you start to believe the things that you tell yourself. So I sometimes have to come outside of myself and then use the different approaches to remind myself, uh-uh, no, nope, we're going, we got to get back on track. You know, uh, you're, you're going to love this, right? I, I don't know how I missed this. This, this was, this was pivotal at a point in my life, right? Um, I was writing my affirmations and then I started to write my affirmations specifically on things that gave me problems. Meaning mm. <clears throat> I would write out an affirmation, like, like, let's just say like, I know problems would come into my life, right? And problems will come into your life, whatever, whatever, whatever. That's just part of life, right? But I would write down, I am great at solving problems, right? Mm. That's a good one. So, so it would be like, all right, if a problem comes, well, I know I'm great at it. So come on, right? Or it'll, something like, I am, I am highly motivated, right? When I know like there, there would be times that I'm not motivated, It'd be like, I know how, you know, I would literally find the things that I'm having the hardest things with. And I know a lot of people don't talk about that type of affirmation, but like, if I say that um, when I first started, I wasn't great in marketing. So I, I would write down, I am a marketing genius, right? And it was like, okay, that means, dude, if you're going to be a genius, you got to have to go through this, 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 this to get to that level. Um, like, I, I would just think of like the hardest thing, but the problem solving thing used to bother me a lot. And when, when I wrote down and I wrote it down many different ways, right? Like it would say, 
I like solving problems. I love solving problems. I welcome problems so I can solve them. You know, I'm so good at solving problems. I can solve it for myself and others. And it, it gave me, it was almost like the, the gratitude of problems now, right? Saying that now I can look at problems differently. I didn't look at it as this venomous, uh, you know, cobra trying to hit me with, you know, just bite me and kill me or anything. I was able to look at it and be like, oh, stop. And then I'll, I'll turn to the side and be like, oh, you're not so threatening. Okay, I just need to readjust a couple of things here and maybe add this to it or... Uh, matter of fact, you're not even a problem at all and get rid of it. Yeah, so yeah. that was huge, a huge thing in, uh, in my life was writing yeah. like serious problems that I was having. Like, look, okay, like if you were having, uh, <clears throat> if I had a hard time being in front of a camera, I'd be like, I love being in front of the camera. I look great being in front of the camera. People love to see me on the camera. And I would like, it would completely be the opposite of whatever I was fearing. That's good. I love that. That's good. Yeah, I would have to say, I went through um, reframing uh, the my affirmations as well. I changed the language to, I'm grateful for the opportunity and then whatever wow. it is. Cause I read, um, yeah, I read Atomic Habits by James Clear and that book totally like took over my world. I got like four people to read it. It ran through my house. Like it was really big for me. And it just talked about, it's called Atomic Habits by James I Clear. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a great book. It's a great I'm book, it but out. it just really talked about, yeah, it just really talked about, um, just kind of like reframing, like, you know, the habits that you have in particular, when it came to affirmations, it was more so talking about, I don't think it mentioned affirmation, but I just applied it to it, but it was just main, so mainly talking about um, looking at habits as things you would gain versus what you'll be missing out on. Mm. And so for me, when I started writing affirmations, I'm like, okay, I know that I want to get up earlier. So it's like, I'm grateful for the opportunity to get up earlier clear some space for my time, has my space to talk to God and get myself ready for the day instead of thinking about all the sleep I'll be losing, waking up at 5.30 instead of waking up at eight. So it helped just change. And I was like, okay, almost like the problem solving, I'm grateful for the opportunity to problem solve. I'm grateful for the opportunity to, you know, start my own business and gain financial freedom. And I'm just being grateful for these opportunities. We just have to reframe the way we look at them because we, all of these are opportunities. Yes. Whether you have an L, that's an opportunity to learn a lesson. Doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to be a loss. So, you know, there's just so many ways that you can really just change the way that you think and it's going to impact your life in ways that are just going to be so fruitful and just so many different ways fruitful is not always um connected to monetary accomplishments i agree Tyga, i you know, love my co-host i love her i was about to say <laughs> man I, I i gotta give i i want to say this you guys need to document everything because here's the thing like this is the beginning stages of, of a phenomenal show, phenomenal show. And where you're going to be six months, a year from now, you're not going to be the same person anymore. And people will have these questions and be like, how did you get started? At least you now archive some of your early, you know, you documented your early stages and you'd be like, hey, refer to this video or go to this video or enroll in this course and I will show you exactly how we got to that document everything because you are like a this is a living documentary right now yeah uh, so like mini what do they call those they don't even call it a doc they call it like a docu-series docu-series yeah, docu yep. <laughs> it's a docu-series and and, and I'm true. and I have front row seats eating my popcorn <laughs> enjoying the hell out of this shit <laughs> No, we appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for joining us, for dropping all of your gems, for being transparent, sharing your story, um, giving us some things to come home with, teaching us about visualization. I mean, honestly, you coming, coming into this, I was excited. Leaving, I feel full. I have to be honest with you. You really Good. just, you gave us more than 
what I was looking for. You gave us everything. We appreciate yeah. you. Yeah, you tried you tried to jerk a couple of tears out of me. I, I wasn't gonna <laughs> have that shit. Nah, man. Yeah, nah, yeah, you guys almost pulled a couple of tears out of me. I was like, hold up, hold up. <laughs> breathe, nigga, breathe. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tiger. It is a true honor to have you on our show. We appreciate you. I know I feel transformed. Just like you said, you know, you're becoming, I'm becoming, I feel different <laughs> now than I did an hour ago. So I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Until yes. our next episode. Bye, everybody. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we go, Please, Tiger, where can the people find you? Yes, yes. Connect with you. What you got going on? Come and tell sure. us. The people going to want you after this. They That's right. Piece of uh, yeah, on. just go to TigerToledo.com <laughs> or just Google me. Shit, I'm popular, baby. That's right. Google me, Tiger Toledo. No, no. All right. And I appreciate that, ladies, for, for plugging me in. Now, you guys plug something in. Plug in okay. an offer. You, I need to hear you, an offer. You gotta well, <laughs> you even if you ain't got it right now, you better develop it with by the time this show come out. God damn it. Okay. So um, I have an ebook out called The Notary Pivot. It helps notaries um, consider what digital products they can create for those who haven't created a digital product yet. I'm working on another ebook, teaching notaries how to write an ebook, making it much more simplistic so that any knowledge that they have that they can transfer from business or personal or their talents and skills, they can put that in an ebook um, and become a digital author. Um, so I have that coming out soon. And you can also find me on freedom notary on instagram wonderful t go ahead yes. plug something in come on you want well, the am... award you need to plug something in i say and i'm always ready my name is tiara <laughs> bryant i'm the owner of t bryant notary services based in new jersey we are a notary and apostilles agency um and then i also am a wedding efficient so i help notaries and other people breaking into the wedding industry to become a wedding efficient, I have the e-course. I also have templates out as well as I am your efficient doula. I help guide you through the process of becoming a wedding efficient and building out your dream business. So you can always connect with me, uh, Tierra Bryan. You can Google me too. I don't know what you're going to find, but you <laughs> can Google <laughs> me. <laughs> Brick City. No, listen, yeah. listen. Okay, I I'll let you guys go after this. But every show, y'all better make an offer. Every show plug in your shit it's your show right nobody yeah. can't it's better you plug it in on your own platform than asking somebody for permission to plug it in on their platform right plug yeah. in your because people are going to watch you they're going to fall in love with you guys and they'll be like all right what else do they have but like i want like there's people that are watching the show right now and putting it out in the, in the universe there are people watching your show right now in the universe saying i want more I want to separate myself from the people that are watching it from YouTube to actually becoming a, a, a fan, a supporter, a paid customer of their products or services. So you have to put it out there because my favorite Bible verse, and I'll leave it off on this one, Matthew 7, 7, 8 says, ask and ye shall receive, seek and ye shall find, and knock and the door shall open upon to you. If you don't Ooh. ask, you don't get. That's right. I'm done. Yeah. Thank you, that Tiger. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, y'all. Womanomics podcast. Womanomics podcast.